It's a really debated question in the field. It's very, very uh, controversial, actually. There's a lot of people who are for acupuncture and a lot of people that are uh, sort of against acupuncture. Um, the acupuncture field, in, in order to understand the research in chronic pain, is that you have to sort of understand how to control for the intervention. So, like, typically if you're thinking of a drug, it's very easy to come up with a control. You basically just make a pill that just doesn't have that compound in it, and as long as the patient can't tell the difference uh, between a placebo pill and the actual pill in terms of, like, taste or color or smell or whatever, you've got a nice control that's very inert, fairly inert. For acupuncture, you're dealing with uh, an intervention where you touch the person, you may stick needles in them, obviously that's gonna cause a sensation, and so that raises the question of, you know, how do you study this and how do you control for it? It turns out that a lot of the sham controlled studies of acupuncture have shown that sham acupuncture is very similar to placing acupuncture needles in traditional acupuncture points. So like the sham treatment would be non-traditional points versus traditional points. And the sham treatments um, very often are quite effective at reducing clinical pain or chronic pain. However, what I'm gonna talk about in my talk is also that if you have a different comparator group, say you're comparing acupuncture versus standard of care or acupuncture versus uh, waitlist control or acupuncture versus no treatment at all. In those types of studies, the data is really, really strong showing that acupuncture has a really profound effect on uh, chronic pain. The data on acute pain is actually a little more straightforward and it looks like with acute pain, like post-surgical pain, um, nausea and vomiting as well uh, with surgery, the data is really strong that acupuncture is uh, efficacious for those kind of conditions. It's just in the chronic pain field, the, the results are a little more mixed and partly that may be due to the heterogeneities of the different chronic pain conditions that are at play. And it may also be, like I was saying, due to the fact that the sham treatments are probably not inert. Um, there's been studies where people have compared sham acupuncture versus a placebo pill. So two placebos basically and the sham acupuncture was much more effective at reducing pain than a placebo pill. So you really have to sort of understand the, the methodology behind how the experiments are done, how the clinical trials are done, to sort of understand or form your own opinion about what you think the data shows. There's been a number of studies over the last, I'd say, 15 years where people have used acupuncture needles and stuck them into people while they were scanning their brains, either doing functional magnetic resonance imaging, so basically just getting an idea about what the brain response is to the needle, just the neural activity. There's also been studies that have looked at neurochemical changes, changes in neurotransmitter levels, as well as changes in uh, receptors. And the group that I'm in, we performed one of the first studies looking at opioid receptors, which Many people in the pain field realize that opioid receptors probably play a big role in uh, endogenous uh, pain inhibiting mechanisms. And what we were able to find was that while both real acupuncture and sham acupuncture both reduced clinical pain in our population, which was fibromyalgia patients, we, we reduced clinical pain basically the same amount in both groups. The actual effect that acupuncture and sham acupuncture had on the nervous system, on the opioid receptors, when you measured them with uh, PET or positron emission tomography, we had the exact opposite effects on the receptors. So what we found was that sham acupuncture caused a reduction in the receptor binding ability, which we inferred was due to an increased release of endorphins, which if you understand the PET imaging methodology, release of endorphins will inhibit the binding of your radioactive tracer. However, for acupuncture, what we found with the traditional needling, we found an increase in the receptor's binding ability. Either the receptors were able to bind stronger to the endogenous ligands, or maybe there was an insertion and a translation of more receptors being expressed on the plasma membrane, and thereby um, basically making it 
uh, more effective at reducing pain, but they did it via different mechanisms. It looked like sham increased the neurotransmitter, whereas real acupuncture was working on the receptors and modifying the receptor's ability to bind. So that's what some of the research has shown. And with fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, um, there's been some nice work out of um, Harvard with Vitaly Napadal's group, and they've shown that acupuncture needling can actually deactivate uh, certain systems in the brain, specifically the limbic system. And it's sort of counterintuitive. You would have kind of expected that if you insert a needle into somebody, you'd expect their brain to get more activated. But actually, you get an inhibition of the limbic activity. And that was specific to where the needles were placed. So there was point specificity to some extent as to whether they were needling a real point versus a control or sham point. Well, there's two, a two angles, basically. So the people that are typically running clinical trials that are looking for efficacy, I think now a lot of clinical trials have been done showing that acupuncture and sham acupuncture both have effects on chronic pain and also in other conditions as well. And the clinical trialists, I think, are now moving towards more of a uh, clinical usefulness of this intervention. I don't know if you remember, but when I was first talking, I was saying that when you compare acupuncture versus standard of care for a given pain condition, many times acupuncture beats it. So the clinician probably doesn't really care so much as to whether it's working via a placebo mechanism or some other mechanism. It's very safe, which is something that's known for a long time, and it's cheap and the effects last for quite a while. So um, anyway, the clinical trialists, I think, are sort of now moving into an area of where they can combine acupuncture with other treatment modalities. So combining acupuncture with cognitive behavioral therapy or uh, exercise, a massage, or, you know, other, or even drugs. Um, so that's sort of the angle that the trialists, I think, are going to be going in. Now, the basic science angle sort of is asking about how does, the acu how does acupuncture actually mechanistically work? And there's still a lot to be done there. There's a lot to be done. And um, I think the future of the research is going to be translational, combining both work from animal studies and translating that into humans, doing a mechanistic study in humans that have a disease, and then back translating that into animals, and then also pairing it with new interventions as well. So there's a lot to be done, there's a lot to be done. We're very much at our infancy in really understanding, you know, chronic pain for one, but also acupuncture as well. We're, we're basically now just learning uh, some of the mechanisms of those, those the, the diseases of chronic pain as well as how acupuncture might work.